Where's the housing market crash? This is your Canadian housing market update for October 2020. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to DG Capital. This is your premier destination for personal finance, investing, real estate, and more. Today, we'll be taking a look at what's happening with the Canadian housing market and all the latest news, stats, and figures to keep you informed. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. It helps support the channel and helps me deliver future videos. So let's get started. What's happening now is that single family home sales are on the rise and the pain is being felt in the downtown condo sales. There is an economic shift being felt in the housing market, potentially pricing declines in condo and apartment style homes and major uptake in townhomes, semis, and detached in suburban markets. This shift is further inflating the already inflated housing prices. Toronto real estate prices are so inflated that a Swiss investment bank is warning that the city is sitting on a high risk bubble. According to the UBS Global Real Estate Bubble Index, Toronto ranks as the third most overpriced major city in the world. Any city with a rating above 1.5 in the index is classified as bubble risk. The index looks at typical signs of a bubble, which includes a huge separation of prices from local incomes and rents and imbalances in the real economy, such as excessive lending and construction activity. Toronto is the only major North American city in the study that was found to be at risk of a housing bubble. We can see when looking at the map that Toronto is just behind two German cities, Munich and Frankfurt. The site has this cool map where you can see the various cities around the world and the rating on the index. When we look over to Vancouver, we can see that it was also considered to be a bubble risk in both 2018 and 2019. However, the rating now in 2020 is 1.37, leaving it in just overvalued territory. This will be a step in the right direction for buyers who have been waiting for the market in Vancouver to show signs of cooling in order to buy a home. In addition to Vancouver, Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York are also considered to be overvalued, but not at the risk of a bubble. On the other end of the spectrum, Chicago is the only North American city to be considered undervalued. Home values throughout the pandemic have been supported by government stimulus mortgage bailouts and deferrals, and low interest rates. UBS pointed out that it considers price gains in these circumstances to be unsustainable. And I tend to agree. Unemployment is high, businesses are shutting down, and work hours are getting cut. But there are those buying up million dollar homes as soon as they hit the market, taking on obscene amounts of mortgages. It's just mind blowing crazy. When we look at the list view, we can see Toronto has been a bubble risk since 2018. Slightly improved in 2019, but now in 2020 has moved higher than the 2018 level. This is a real cause for concern. People are getting giant mortgages that they probably can't afford just to be in Toronto. The rating is even higher than Hong Kong and Paris, and Hong Kong is known to be especially unaffordable. So it's really saying something for Toronto to be considered at higher risk than a city like Hong Kong or Paris. I get that Toronto has great amenities, many jobs are here, and companies have chosen to place their headquarters in Toronto. You might have family that lives in the region. But is that all worth it? To tie a giant ball and chain to your feet for that size of a mortgage? I honestly don't think that many understand that if and when the market starts to go down, they might be underwater, which means that the balance of your mortgage is higher than the value of your home. Any one of you out there interested in moving to Dubai? Let me know in the comments. UBS is not the only one warning of concern regarding Toronto's housing market. Back in May of 2020, CMHC was also predicting that housing markets will see a historic recession in 2020. Hasn't exactly panned out yet, as they were expecting the average MLS price will drop by 9 to 18% from their pre-COVID-19 levels. Even now, Chief Economist Bob Dugan is calling for housing prices to decline by 18% because of pandemic-induced 
weak housing demand. Moody's, a credit rating agency, is also predicting Canadian home prices to fall. But they're expecting this to happen in 2021. They're calling for housing prices to fall by 7% next year. Calgary and Edmonton are expected to be among the hardest hit cities with a 10% expected slide in prices as oil market woes continue. A statement by author Abhishek Singh of Moody's Analytics says, the housing market will no longer be able to escape the poor condition of the labor market as vacancy and delinquency rates rise in 2021. The thought is that persistent high unemployment and lower incomes will hold back buyers' returns to the market, along with affordability issues in Vancouver and Toronto. The other piece, slower immigration to Canada, especially to these two major hubs in Vancouver and Toronto, due to COVID-19 disruptions, will also weigh in on housing demand. According to Singh, not even lower interest rates will be enough to save the housing market. The only city predicted to withstand any major market downturn is Ottawa, where Moody's is forecasting a decline of only 3%, which is half the amount compared to Montreal, Halifax, and Hamilton. For renters, there may be some additional good news, as Moody's is calling for an increase to rental vacancies in both Toronto and Vancouver, as there is expected to be an oversupply of rental units due to softening demand in the condo markets. This can be explained by an increase in work-from-home scenarios where office workers no longer need to live in dense areas and be close to their offices and will be looking for properties with more space in the suburbs. Data from the Toronto Real Estate Board, TREB, shows a 215% increase in condominium listings between September 2019 and September 2020. The increase in the supply of condos being sold on the market has reduced condo rental prices by an average of 11% in the third quarter of 2020 compared to the same period last year. This is the largest annual decline ever recorded in the city. We're going to see people move to get cheaper rents simply because of all the new construction being completed and almost no new tenants coming in. COVID-19 has proven to be a major blow to the condo market, with downtown Toronto being the region the hardest hit. Condo owners that have owned their units for a long time have seen their capital appreciation skyrocket, so they will be taking advantage and taking profits off the table before they see prices come down further. Some owners are even cutting their condo prices by $20,000 below market value just to lure in new buyers. While condo sales and rentals have dropped, new home sales have skyrocketed in the greater Toronto area. Such sales have spiked 42.3% since the same time last year, the highest annual rise in the GTA's history. By now it's pretty clear, the pandemic has increased demand for larger homes with more outdoor space and in some cities has increased the flight from urban centers to the suburbs. For example, both New York and San Francisco have seen large outflows of the population either to smaller cities or suburban areas, just like Toronto and Vancouver has seen. So if you're looking to buy a condo in these two major markets like Toronto or Vancouver, 2021 can be your lucky year with many new listings of condos coming up. The last piece to come out of Moody's report is that the pandemic has boosted demand for properties offering more space for working from home and fewer shared spaces with neighbors. Smaller markets where properties are more affordable will particularly benefit from this trend. Even RBC Economics is forecasting a further softening of condo prices in major residential markets. According to a statement by economist Robert Hogue, the bottom line is we expect condo prices to weaken in larger markets next year. Here's my take on forecasts and predictions, no matter what expert or agency is providing the outlook. It's all just a guess, a big unknown guess that may or may not work out because no one has a crystal ball that they can see into the future with. Every time you hear someone or an organization providing a forecast or an expert outlook, remember they are just making a guess and take it with a grain of salt. I can tell you from experience that even large public corporations that are providing quarterly or annual forecasts are delivering you with their own best guess into the future with just a handful of assumptions chosen at a point in time. Having said that, what we can't ignore is the emerging trend here, and that is the supply of condos is increasing. 
and the supply of larger properties is quickly decreasing. So if we look at the laws of supply and demand, the increase in the supply of condos hitting the market will surely put pressure on those prices. On the flip side, homeowners are taking the equity that is built up in their condos and using that money to quickly buy up single family homes, creating even more demand for these types of properties and inflating already inflated prices. I've heard from many homeowners who are in shock at how much the value of their homes have gone up and they can't believe what someone would be willing to pay to buy a similar home in today's market. They would not buy their own home at today's market prices. So forget about moving somewhere else. This is further contributing to low supply because if people move, where are they going to go? With prices on the rise, why would you sell your house to pay equal or more? Unless you're looking to downsize or take the profit from your current property and move further away to a smaller city where you'll get more value. And this is exactly what's happening. This shift causes waves of higher property prices as people move into different regions with the money they have made on their current homes. So maybe the hope for first time home buyers will be the oversupply of condos hitting the market where there is pressure on the pricing. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. So please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button to support the growth of the channel and so I can provide more videos like this. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.